We've got a lot to talk about tonight. Um, had a big, big weekend. Lots of things going on this weekend. And obviously a little overwhelming. Um, it was, it so was, It was a weekend. It was, it was, it was more it than was a weekend. It was a great weekend, but it was a uh, weekend. We started the week getting Maggie fixed up. Yep. Getting her drove all her all the way to Mississippi. We have found a few things we need to work on, but they're not big things. Right? She got a little wind noise at 75 miles per hour. I got to work on those window seals just a little bit more. See if yeah, I can't get those. Must. It's a little little aggravating at 75 miles per hour. Um, but otherwise, she went. She drove great. Like, she, she made the trip 1,000 miles on a car that old. She did good. She did good. No she problem whatsoever. We were not on the side of the road. We, don't say stuff like that, Jill. You can't bring that stuff <laughs> up. Lord. Um, we went to Cathead, and they bottled our Brusel pick. The This is the buttered pecan pick that we did on the stream so a little while ago. Um, so excited to try this one tonight. You Did you try it there? No, not this weekend. You didn't try it this nope. weekend? So we're going to get to try this here on the stream here in just a minute. We then... Picked three more barrels. We did. From Old Soul. We so we got that. three coming. And then we're going to have three more later in the year. So we're going to have all the Old Soul. I hope you all like Old Soul. We don't know what we're doing with that yet, though, right? Well, we got a little we got a little debate. And y'all will see the video. Well, the video will come out. They're going to hold those barrels. The video will come out of that event. And we have to decide if we want to release them as single barrels or a three-barrel blend. A J-Rock because blend. <laughs> several of the folks there liked the equal parts blend that J-Rock did. It was And it, it, it was, was really good. It was really good. You think good. it was the best? I do. I, I mean, think it's better than the individual ones. Okay. I think That's the fair. blend was That's fair. where it's at. Um so we'll see. We'll see. But we gotta decide. We got a decision to make on that. So if I have a vote in it then I want to You're the voting blend. for the blend. I okay. want the blend. Well y'all let us know after you see that video if you want the blend or not. And then we did our second ever distillery takeover of Cathead Distilling. Had over 200 folks there for that event. It was a lot of freaking fun. So much fun. Um, and then the, the, the spill. Well, they did event. the pick. Well, they did a pick. Oh, yeah, yeah. At this, at this distillery takeover, they literally let, we, they said the first 50, but they let anybody that came in the first 45 minutes try it. Try three barrels, pick one, and they bottled it right there. And this says <laughs> Brusel B team pick on it right there. We're going to get to try this one here as well. I didn't get to try I didn't even try it. I wanted all, because they only had so many samples. That's uh -huh. really why they cut it off. Uh, I think there might have been 60, 70 samples, and I didn't want to I didn't want to take a spot from somebody. Yeah. So I didn't even I get didn't to try, try them. So we're going to give this one a try here. Um, otherwise, nothing else happened. There was nothing else this weekend that happened <laughs> Yeah, that all. was it. Nothing. No. That, was, that, was, that was it. Uh, no, the next day was the Spillway event. If you've been watching the channel for a while, you probably remember that video from last year. And uh, it was a little bigger this year. Just, just a just little bigger. A little. Just a little bigger. A little bigger. Um, it was over a thousand people. Last year was 150 people ish. This year had to be over a thousand. Uh, they were people just tailgating the out there. The parking lot was full. Pe like people like just the out there bottle lot. sharing. Parking lot party. I think there were people parking on the grass, on the sides of the road. Yeah, yeah, everywhere. They were parking all in all the places. I mean, we got there at, what, 8 a.m.? It was already full. Yeah, the parking lot was pretty much full at that point. Yeah. Um, and there were a lot of folks there just hanging out. Not even there to get bottles. Just hanging out, having a good time. Um, you know, sitting out there just being social. Um, and the Infinity Barrel went better than expected. Like, <laughs> much, much easier. And I've got the Infinity Blend right here. So I'm going to try this one as well. Did you try this? Did you try the Infinity Blend? No. You're trying well, to... Jill, Jill didn't drink anything this weekend. How did you pull that off? I didn't drink a lot. Um, I'm not sure. I may have tried that. Wait, we're going to try it. And then I just happened to grab a tin type number two while I was there at Old Soul. Ah, uh, Big J-Rock said slightly larger. What do you... I don't know what he's talking oh, about. Oh, then, yeah, the spillway event. Yeah, oh, slightly, slightly. larger. Slightly. Just... Just, Just a hair. Just a little bit. Like 7X. Sipping the South said I'd say 1500 plus. I, I mean, that's probably like. Well, I, we don't really even all know. All we know is what Josh told us. And like last year, 
the peak draw, when they, they were drawing 100 numbers, they gave away 140 or 50 tickets. This year, the peak draw was 900 tickets. So there were considerably more than 900 people there because there were a lot of people, myself included, that weren't even going and to get tickets. tickets. Yeah, I think um, only got tickets twice. Yeah, and it's, you know, it's, it's uh, events like that that, like I absolutely adore those events. And we're looking for more fun things to do because whiskey is a social activity. It's one of the reasons it grew so much during the pandemic. And it's easy when you're sitting here behind the camera, you know, posting videos, everybody, everybody posts content that gets significant views, gets a lot of hateful comments. We, we do uh, get our fair share of hateful comments. Most of them just yes. ignorant, but <laughs> not all. Like, I mean, some, some folks have fair criticism and I'm down with fair criticism, but there's a difference in criticism and just being hateful. And mean. Um, but you go to events like that and I can't tell you how many people came up and talked about how, you know, they had rekindled uh, a, a relationship that they had, you know, not had for many, many years over whiskey or folks that have met new friends and, and got out uh, because of our content and bourbon groups and, you know, folks that were talking about how, you know, as they get older, their social circle gets smaller and, you know, through they discovered the content and through whiskey, they've been able to expand that social circle. You've got people out there cooking and tailgating and having a good time uh, around this bourbon event. And that is much more what it's about than fancy bottles of whiskey. And so it's, you know, just, it's a little overwhelming to go out to events like that and see the, the impact that folks are communicating to us that the content has had for them. And so I thank y'all for watching on that. I appreciate the positive feedback because Lord have mercy, it is easy to let the negative feedback overwhelm you sometimes, and it's good to go out and, and see the positive as well. So we want to definitely make sure, though, we are figuring out more ways, bigger ways to improve that impact. Like, I, you know, it's, it's a social activity. So how can we, as we grow this channel, make sure we don't lose sight of that and continue to try to do bigger, more social things uh, and, and things outside of just an event at Spillway each year, right? Yeah. Um, so continue to grow and push and do crazy things. Les says, Jill was freezing at the start of the Spillway event and I was. She was about and to die. And Linda rescued me and gave me a jacket. So thank you very much. It was cold in the morning It though. was very cold. I, I really thought, because it was supposed to be in the 70s that day. So I was like, okay, it'll be fine. I won't need a jacket. So I left the hotel that morning with no jacket, and then I get there and I'm freezing. Fortunately, though, Linda had a jacket, and she she let me use it for the day. So I really appreciate that. Echoes in it Eternity Bourbon asks, "What did I get when I I did my ticket? Did get called, and I did go in, and I had no idea what to get. He wouldn't answer the phone. I was granted busy. he was busy, and I me and I was like, Will, what I get? And Will's like, I don't know. So I I was looking for like the door prizes because last year I got the chair. I was trying to get a chair again this year, but all the door prizes were gone in like the first round. So mm. I got no door prize. I got no bottle. I just went back outside. She got nothing. <laughs> she just like, I quit. I go, I went back outside, but oh well. It's all good. Yeah. We didn't need anything anyway. No, I didn't need any we, bottles. Don't believe, don't, don't worry. We left with a lot of whiskey. We did. But not from Spillway. Actually, mostly from you folks. Yes. You fine folks loaded us up with samples. It was less than, it was actually exactly half the number of bottles we left with last year. Really? So still plenty of bottles. Plenty of bottles, yes. Yes. Freaking bottles. Will said including his cornhole boards. Oh yeah, Will's cornhole yeah. boards got given. He left them right there where, where all the giveaway stuff was. So Will unloaded the truck at Spillway the night before and put it all up front where all the, the um, giveaway stuff was. And he left his cornhole board sitting there and somebody gave him away. So don't do that. <laughs> Those were door prize, apparently. <laughs> they, didn't get the, they didn't get the bags. There's though. no bags. Yeah, we had the bags. <laughs> so, so. If, you want, if you want the bag, if you were at the Spillway event and you got cornhole boards and you want the bags, <laughs> send us an email. I will mail you Will's cornhole bags. You don't have to give the boards back. I'll mail you the bags to go along yeah, with Yeah, we're going to replace his boards. He's going to get some bruised ones. 
How did Will like the event? Will was slinging some merch. Will this and was, Lexi did such a great job. They did job. a great job. I mean, all the folks. Everybody, yes. You know, Kyle everybody Jackie. except for Grant. Everybody but Grant did a great job. <laughs> Seth, <laughs> Alyssa, Alex. I said Kyle and Jackie. Yeah. Um, who am I forgetting? Oh, Levi and Rainey. Lord. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. For sure. Love, love us. J-Rock was jumping in. We had a bunch of volunteers helping with the infinity barrel. Yeah. Um, because that infinity barrel, it was a, a lot more labor intensive to fill the barrel than I anticipated. And um, a lot easier to get it out than I anticipated. But that's because we thought through the getting it out. But Grant, unfortunately, was taking a train and his train had an accident yeah. before he got on it. And so he didn't even make it. So, but we miss Grant. We miss Grant, but he didn't do a good job because he wasn't there. <laughs> <laughs> so by default. By default. I mean, not that's not a knock on Grant. I'm no. just just giving him a hard time. Uh, so we we did that. Like I'm trying to think of everything that went on that day. Oh, the, I know. The dunk some, tank. The dunk tank. The dunk tank happened. That'll be uh, awesome in the video. That's going to be. Tell y'all. It's going to be interesting. And, I really wanted a chance. Like, I thought I was going to get a chance at the end. Mm -mm. But then when you hurt your arm, I was Oh, yeah, I got injured. I'm, I'm I was not done. I was like, I'm not going to do that to him. I'm not athletic anymore. I used to be many, many years ago. These days, not so much. So, I'm sitting on this thing. Now, when you first get up there, you're unstable. You, you don't know how to, you know, you, I've never been in a dunk tank. So, it's a little unstable. You're a little, a little uncertain. The first guy nailed me. And, sure and I was like, okay, well, this is not too bad. But I get up there and they're like, just use this rail to hold on and balance yourself. So I'm sitting there. I got it now. After the first one, I got it. Pretty easy. I'm holding the rail to balance. And then the next guy that knocks me down, my reflexes are to grab that bar. Like you're just going down, you grab the bar. And so all my weight and gravity and I'm holding on to a bar. And I pulled or tore or did some... Did a little damage there on the bicep. It, it feels a little better today. But it was for a great cause. We it was raised, for a great cause. We raised some money for the Alzheimer's I, Association. Six hundred something dollars in Mississippi. So thanks it to was Levi. Worth it. Thanks yes. to Levi. Levi was such a trooper. He got in that tank. He wasn't. He didn't come there expecting to get in a dunk tank that day, but he did, and he did such a great job. So we thank you, Levi. Got a nice redneck sunburn. I, they, that was a problem, too. I didn't Me even think too. about sunscreen. I literally got a sunburn look from here to here. Almost. Look at it. It's not a sunburn. That was... It was Come on. Look at that. Come on. You can tell the difference. I only got it from here to here. Oh. <laughs> on both arms, though. Oh, I also... I have to say thank you to Mary and Brandon for making us the most awesome gift. They made us a lamp out of TJ's favorite bottle. you got to go bring the lamp down. You didn't bring a lamp down. I didn't. That's definitely, that's definitely, it might, honestly, it might be in this bar. If there's room on the room. countertop yeah. in there, but when this is cleaned off and we move in there, it's definitely going to be on this bar. They made us a beautiful lamp out not. of a 107 bottle and it, it was just awesome. So thank you guys. I don't know if y'all are watching tonight, but we love it. Thank you so much. Jay Buck with the first super chat. Appreciate the support. Thanks for a great weekend. It was great to meet you both. Spillway put on a great event. Not to fret. I didn't forget to take the Antique 107 instead of the Special Reserve. Enjoy that Opus X. Mm. I'm very much looking forward. Honestly, if I'd had time and it didn't like it was going to rain, I'd probably go outside after this stream and smoke that Opus X. So I'm very much looking forward to that one. Um, it won't last very long, that's for sure. Each distillery takeover is just getting better and better. I well, yeah, I mean, it. Old Dominic was great. Oh, it was great. But it was a Monday night. Yeah. Right? So that, that probably kept the crowds down a little bit. Um, we didn't promote it as well as we did this one. Um, and we live streamed it instead of recording it. So I think the, mm -hmm. the live stream aspect is maybe great for y'all, but I think you'll like the video better. But we'll see. So depending on how this video does when it comes out, we will make a determination as to whether or not we're going to stream them or, or record them. Yeah. Uh, it's a little more manageable for me to record, record them versus yeah. stream them, but we'll see. You're actually able to kind of, when you record, we're able to stop and take breaks and do stuff. And, you know, we don't yeah. have to like be going 100% the whole time. Mark Trish says, Knob Creek 18 is so yummy. I've got a bottle I bought from Old Soul. It is an undisclosed... Um, undisclosed distillery, but it is 15-year-old Kentucky distillate that my palate tells me comes from a particular distillery that tastes a lot like Knob Creek. 
Spartan, love seeing you and Brandon. Thank you for signing my six year Crendon single barrel. Hope you like it. Love, I love it. Lots of vanilla. Oh, I love a Crendon single barrel for sure. And anytime, like I, I had a blast hanging out with folks, signing things. I do think it's weird that people want me to sign things. <laughs> my autograph is horrible. I'm gonna have to work on some like yeah. really formal autograph. <laughs> so, I, I, you, can, was, like, brrr, you can barely well, tell the, what it says. You can barely tell what it says. But then, like, so the guys at Short Barrel, I signed some bottles. They posted a picture online, and somebody's like, that's like 7J. <laughs> what? So yeah. you'll if you look at the autographs, halfway through the day, I start putting a little more effort into the T. <laughs> so the T goes from a 7 to a proper T. Mm -hmm. They're halfway through the day. So he was the second guy. That's the guy that hurt me. Super chat. That's the guy that hurt me, Luke. That's you. <laughs> You're the guy that hurt. You're the guy. Okay? I would beat you up, but now my arms hurt. Luke throws hard. Yes. He throws the ball very hard. He's got like a 98 mile per hour fastball with a softball. <laughs> I thought I had, see, I, I think I figured out something though. This is what I figured out. Because he hit it. And it almost went. Yeah. And he hit it hard. hard. And I realized if I would have just taken, because I weigh a lot. And like the more pressure down on it, the harder it is that you have to hit that thing. If oh. I would have just taken the rail and pushed down on the rail, I don't know if anybody could have knocked me off that thing. Maybe <laughs> except for Luke. I don't know. He was throwing it hard. That would have been fun. Um, would have been fun to try. I wish I, I thought about that right before he uh, he destroyed me. So, I uh, would like to also give a big shout out to the people at Spillway. The staff were very kind yes, and amazing. I'm telling you, Josh, Justin, the whole crew. They did amazing. a great job. Yeah, they, uh, they put on a great show considering that it was twice as big as they anticipated. So, it was, uh, it was good. Do we know how many bottles went into the Infinity Barrel? That's a good question. I don't know if, if Seth, Seth's not here. He would know that. I think it was over 100, so somewhere between 100 and 150, I think, was the number, but I don't have the exact number. He is working on, by the time that video comes out, we will have a total, we will have a list of every bottle that was in it. Oh, wow. And then the proof and anything we can determine. Um, I don't know if we're going to go through and get the mash bills of each one of these. <laughs> I'm hoping when the app's finished, we can build a sub app that scans all the barcodes and then just builds a mash bill and an expected proof and everything right there um, in short order. That would be a lot of fun. How did the bottle equipment work out at Spillway? One of the valves malfunctioned a little bit, but other than that, it went great. Like it was as good as could be expected. So I think we'll continue with the bottling equipment. The dumping equipment, like the pump, We'll use the pump, but I want like an actual dump tank. I got to find some weights to figure out like is a dump tank that they had like they had a cat head. Is that something that a couple of people could actually get off a truck? Yeah. Will it fit on a truck? Right? You know, that it's just more stuff to bring. And honestly, we ran out of space just trying to bring it. So I'd have to get a trailer to yeah, even do that. You ought to have seen Maggie on the way home. She would load it out. She was she packed. She would load it out. Honda Civic said during the spillway event, who bottled the thing live? That was actually at Cathead. Well, so we, at Cat, Cathead, um, Old Soul, they did a pick, like the first, if you were there in the first 45 minutes, you'd get in line, you could, you could take a sample, and then you could pick your favorite, and they bottled it right there at the distillery and made it available. At Spillway, we did the Infinity Barrel, which means you could just, you brought your own whiskey, you, you know, it was five bucks for a sticker, we stickered the bottle, you, you brought it back at the end of the event, and then we bottled it. So we just had a bunch of volunteers helping to bottle those, and they did a great job. I did survive Rallis from Saturday's event. I was only injured a couple of times. I got a splinter right there, a little ba a bad splinter, and oh, almost, a splinter? almost ripped my arm off. Double. Oh, I thought it was awesome <clears throat> that the Crittenton's pecan was taken over blend. Oh, so that, 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 guys, this is the thing. This is the thing that, I was most excited about at the Spillway event. And it's that on the rack, each rack, there were 40 Crittenden's Toasted Pecans, a small distiller that now is up to four or five employees, I think, not just him. He's got a few 
few helpers, some part time. One of them still his mother, but um, you know, because growing, moms are the best. doing better. I mean, no, that's great, but I'm just saying, doing better, growing a little bit, not just him, but small distiller, forty bottles of toasted pecan to, I don't know, fifteen Blantons, twelve Blantons, I don't know how many Blantons there were, but not as many Blantons as toasted pecans. And on every single rack, the Blantons were still sitting there when the toasted pecan was gone. So That's people awesome. people were going through the line and they were choosing a small craft distiller in Mississippi over a bottle of Blantons every single time they went through. I mean, not everybody, but like the pecan was gone every time and they were still Blantons sitting there. And that is what I'm most excited about with that event and what they've put on and what they've been able to do is they lure you in the bait is all of the allocated stuff and then they hit you with all of this great craft stuff from in and around mississippi and that's that's why we support that event as hard as we do i know it's a liquor store i know they're selling whiskey i know they're you know making money and some folks just hate that now they you know they mark up a little bit on the bottles but it is just negligible compared to what most liquor stores are doing um, so they keep it, you know, keep the bottles affordable and they're supporting craft whiskey much more than most liquor stores are doing. And, and I don't think y'all realize how much travel and effort and work and time and money it takes to have all of those, uh, bottles. Like you gotta be going to distilleries. You always gotta be looking for who's producing quality stuff and going and doing these barrel picks and getting them into a store. And so it's got to be about more than money for you to put that effort in because they could have just sold all those allocated things throughout the year. They would have sold them. They, they, they wouldn't have had any problem selling those allocated if they'd have just put them on the shelf any given Friday. But doing it the way they do it really shows love to a Detling, a Crittenton's, um, the, what is it, Distillery Acadian that was there. Sorry if I got that name wrong. Um, you know, the, those folks, old soul, um, old Dominic, like it just really helps those brands and gives them a platform for folks to get excited about their product. I don't know if I'm giving you this. I really don't. <laughs> oh, also there was some guy that I met, um, at the spillway event and he brought me Boulevard beer. Did. Yes. So awesome. Thank you very much. The, and she was drinking them today. No, I haven't drank one. You drank one. Mine's you opened it. We, no. I, you had it opened. Yes. I and had, then I drank it. Right. Sorry, I thought you were drinking them. No, I haven't drank one yet. Uh, Bourbon Dads would like to thank you, you and Jill for bringing amazing distillers like Matt and Seth to a national audience. Keep up the great work. And we are looking for more. So as you're out there and y'all, yeah. like the B team brings folks to us, right? Like Matt, Seth. Um, old Dominic, old soul, like we were really introduced to those and made contacts with those from Spillway, yep. from Josh at Spillway or Justin at Spillway. And so we are, you know, that's kind of what got us, got us set on that path to knowing about those distilleries and featuring those on the channel. And, you know, the, the folks at Spillway have really played a big part in this channel's content over the last year, really giving us access to some stuff that we might not have had access to before. Because it's funny with a lot of these distilleries, um, we try to do something with them. And, and it's almost all of them. Like name any of them we've done something with. We show up and they're kind of like, yeah, it's a YouTuber. This, you know, this is another YouTuber. We'll do something. We'll, let's keep it kind of tame. And we try to push the envelope and they're like, that's a little crazy. Let's not, Let's just do it tame. And then we do something together and we feature them on the channel and they're like, okay, we get it now. You know, now that we get it, what can we do to take this up a few notches? And I wish they got it at the start, right? Like I wish they knew from the get go and we could have went bigger and better, but it's, it's just like Seth. I was talking to Seth Detling and y'all see it in the video. I'm sure it'll make the cut, but I was talking to him at the end of the event and he's like, man, um, you know, he was just very appreciative, very thankful of what we're doing. And he said, um, he's like, y'all got some reach. Like I, the video came out and like the next day, I think it was, or at least seven days later, 
he was at the New Orleans Bourbon Festival and he's like, man, I was just getting mobbed with people coming up that had seen the video and wanted to talk about us. And, you know, That's he awesome. was he was thankful for, you know, how helpful it has been. Uh, and, and so, but I, like at some point, at some point we will get distilleries that understand the clout level out of the gate and we could do something big with them from the start. But all of them are super conservative until they see, right? All of them. Um, Cathead. They come on the live stream to do some picks and they're like, I didn't really get it. And then halfway through the live stream, they're like, okay, you know, the B team's pretty significant here. Uh, every, it, like just all of them. Like there's not one that is an exception to that. And so y'all keep helping us find them. Y'all go out because we can't try all the whiskey. Y'all go out. Y'all make sure you're submitting your favorite distilleries. But I'm just going to tell you what we're looking for. We're looking for folks. And it not all of it. Like if you find a great brand that you love, please, by all means, share it. But what we're looking for is someone who's distilling their own juice, right? Their own whiskey. They're making it themselves. That's not the only ingredient. That's I mean, it's not a requirement, but that's what we're looking for. Two, they use big barrels. They haven't compromised or cut any corners. Now, I understand you might have to put stuff out at two years. You might make small barrels until your big barrels age. But like we want to find folks that are making top quality whiskey without compromise at this stage. But then also, maybe they're a little slept on. They don't have national distribution. A lot of folks don't know about them. There's kind of, you know, regional legends or whatever. And it, you know, perfect example right here, right? High quality whiskey, to me, it tastes like it's been in a 53 gallon barrel for four years. And um, I'd be surprised if I find out otherwise, otherwise, which I might, like I'm wrong all the time. It doesn't really matter. They're making good whiskey. They're distilling it themselves. We, we will do stuff together. Um, and there's a bunch of them like that. And, and we're trying to work our way through them and do more and more things because I would, I, like I love the bourbon hunts. We will continue to do the bourbon hunts. Don't get me wrong. But this is what I get much more excited about than the bourbon hunts for me, because the bourbon hunts are fun. People like to watch them, but this is actually helping a small business yeah. to take that next step in their journey. Okay, let's see. Oh, Kevin, he says your Detling barrel is going to be a short barrel, harder. Yes, he said that the, the rye barrel is very short. He's like, he sliced it around. There's not a lot of whiskey in there. Oh. So all I can say is, Nothing I can do about it. But when his rye, right, like this is like a preview of his rye. When his rye comes out, we'll get one, but that's like a year plus out. So yeah. um, it is, so he did say a, it's it's a short, like it's just not a lot of whiskey in it. So I don't know what that means. I don't know if that means there's like a hundred bottles, 150 bottles or 45 bottles. Gotcha. Just don't know. But he said it did not have as much whiskey in it as he was expecting. 